Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Stephen Kane. I help people with peripheral neuropathy get out of pain and back to doing the things that they love doing. One of the ways that I help is with this video educational series that gives you tips and valuable information that can help you get better. This particular video is about the microbiome. All right, so what is the human microbiome? This is all of the non-human microbial cells residing within or on the human body. Most commonly, when people talk about it, they're referring to those within the gut. Now, interesting thing about the microbiome is that there are more non-human cells constituting the microbiome than there are actually human cells residing in the body. Collectively, this all constitutes about four pounds of a person's body weight, but this is not four pounds of body weight that you want to shed yourself of. These play an essential role in producing vitamins, enzymes, hormones, neurotransmitters, and just overall play an essential role in the immune system and our overall health. So you want to keep those four pounds of your microbiome, and you also want it to be varied. Having lots of many different types of microorganisms constituting your microbiome is highly correlated with being in a high state of health. Again, if you have peripheral neuropathy, improving upon your microbiome is going to be a great thing for your overall health and could be the key for you getting rid of your neuropathic pains. So how does a compromised microbiome potentially lead to a person developing peripheral neuropathy? There's a lot of different theories out there. Let's go ahead and discuss some of them. It's postulated that an unhealthy microbiome can alter the balance of inter- and intracellular calcium, leading to greater activation of nociceptors, which are the neurons that carry pain signals to the brain. Furthermore, an unhealthy microbiome can lead to various types of bacteria producing different toxins that can lead to spontaneous pain. Viral and fungal pathogens have been shown to alter pain sensitivity by the way that they stimulate the immune response. Many neurotransmitters are produced within the gut, particularly serotonin, in which 90% of it is produced within our gut. Now this affects the way that we perceive pain signals. Other neurotransmitters such as gamma aminobutyric acid and glutamate also affect the way that we perceive pain and are influenced by the type of bacteria we have within our gut. Hence, problems with the microbiome can alter the levels of neurotransmitters in our body leading to more or less pain. Microglia, which are the immune cells in the spinal cord and the brain, help to keep the nerve cells in our brain and our spinal cord functioning correctly. Now these microglia can get compromised in their structure when there's a lack of varied microbiota. However, when there's a recolonization of varied microbiota within us, then the structure of these microglia will turn back to proper state, allowing them to do a better job of keeping our spinal cord and our brain healthy. Hence, our microbiome can affect the health of our central nervous system and in turn affect the way that we perceive pain. Many hormones in the body are created within our intestines. Some such as glucagon-like peptide and neuropeptide Y are involved in pain modulation. The production of these hormones can be altered by our microbiome. Problems of the microbiome can also lead to the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are proteins that alter cell functioning which can ultimately lead to neuroinflammation. Now these are just some of the theories as to how a person can develop peripheral neuropathy by having a compromised microbiome. The bottom line is, is that getting your microbiome healthy is going to be a good thing for you and there's a very good chance it can help you with your peripheral neuropathy and have many other far-reaching benefits beyond that. So what does a person with peripheral neuropathy do to improve upon the health of their microbiome? It all starts by eating a healthy diet. There is no way around this. You must do this, not just to improve upon the health of your microbiome. You need to do this to improve upon the health of your nervous system to give yourself more energy so that you can exercise more, which will in turn help you out more with your neuropathy, to cut down on weight so you have less pressure on your feet and overall have you feeling better. You must eat a healthy diet. So what type of diet should you be eating? It all depends on the individual and should definitely be tailored to the individual. However, most people are gonna do very well with the autoimmune protocol. This diet specifically is designed to improve upon the health of your gut and your immune system as a whole. It is quite restrictive, 
but there are tasty diets and there are ways to make it work for you. Now within this autoimmune protocol, you want to get a variety of the different types of plant products that are permissible within this diet. This variety is what's going to stimulate a variety of the different microorganisms that constitute your microbiome. I'll leave more information as to exactly what this autoimmune protocol is in the description down below. Another great way in which a person can help to improve upon the health of their microbiome is with fasting. When a person stops eating for an extended duration of time, this helps to kill off some of that bad bacteria residing within them. And then when they start eating food again, assuming it's healthy food within this autoimmune protocol, then they'll be able to better recolonize with a much more healthier microbiome. I encourage people to start off with intermittent fasting. This is where you consolidate your eating hours to about eight hours a day, giving yourself 16 hours a day to rejuvenate and repair your gut and also to stimulate a variety of different types of metabolic processes throughout the body. This seems to be a very healthy thing for a person to do. Start off with this intermittent fasting and eventually I recommend working your way up to taking a day or two off of eating altogether. But before you do this, most certainly consult with your medical doctor. If you're taking prescription drugs, there can be side effects. So definitely have a healthcare professional guiding you through this journey of a day or two fast. But most certainly realize that fasting can play an instrumental role in helping you and your microbiome get healthier. Something else to consider is fecal microbiome testing. This is where you send a stool sample to a company. They analyze it, give you a customized report as to what's going on within your gut. Before doing this testing, definitely try out the autoimmune protocol and do the fasting exercise, lead a healthy lifestyle as a whole. And if this is not getting the job done, then try out this testing, get the information as to what's going on within your gut. Also, these companies, in addition to giving you these customized reports, will also create customized probiotics tailored specifically for you based off the results from your testing. This is most certainly the best type of probiotic supplement that a person can take, what's customized for them based off their own needs. If this is something you plan on trying out, I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below for a company that I recommend and that I trust and also a coupon code to save you $25. Something else to consider are probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics are the living strains of bacteria that you can ingest to help recolonize a new type of healthy bacteria within your gut. Prebiotics, these are the healthy plant-based fibers that nourish the existing bacteria within your body to help them grow in numbers. Both of these can be gotten through whole foods as well as through supplements. And I always encourage people to start off with the whole foods. So fermented foods have both prebiotics and probiotics. So eat these kombucha, kimchi, fermented carrots or beets. These are great, wonderful foods that can help nourish your gut with these pro and prebiotics. You can also consider the supplements, but again, I really think it would be best off getting the customized probiotics and or prebiotics from the company that does the testing on you because they already know where you're deficient, what you need, and that is their expertise and tailoring the right type of pro and prebiotic to the person based off the state of their microbiome. Now the next form of therapy we're going to talk about might be the most ridiculous type of therapy you've ever heard of, but do not write it off because it could potentially help you out. This is a fecal microbiota transplantation, taking stools from healthy donors and inserting them rectally into a diseased patient. Now this has been done for over a thousand years in China. It's been used on horses suffering from gut issues such as diarrhea or constipation. And most importantly, it's been demonstrated to help out people suffering from a variety of different types of conditions. I recently came across an article on a lady who had diabetic peripheral neuropathy. She said she tried everything underneath the sun, nothing was helping her out. And then finally, she did two of these fecal microbiota transplantations within one month and her pain was almost completely gone. Her blood sugars had dropped and stabilized from just these two transplantations. Now this is the only article that I've come across illustrating the effects of fecal microbiota transplantation on someone with peripheral neuropathy, 
But there is other evidence suggesting that this type of therapy can help people out with other types of neurological conditions, such as Parkinson's, multiple cirrhosis, or autism. So again, if you've tried all these other forms of therapy and getting yourself better, the right type of diet, the autoimmune protocol, fasting, probiotics, prebiotics, you're exercising, you're leading a healthy lifestyle, and again, nothing is helping you out, then this fecal microbiota transplantation is definitely worth at least discussing with your doctor. Now these are all just some of the new and emerging forms of therapy within this world of microbiome health. Do not forget to exercise regularly a lot. Keep your stress down, sleep well, lead an overall well-rounded lifestyle because all of this will facilitate a healthier microbiome and a healthier you so that you can have less neuropathic pain. If you have tried out any of these therapies before, please leave it in the comments down below so that as a community, we can all learn from your experience and we can all work smarter moving forward. And lastly, I'd like to encourage all of you to take me up on the free 15-minute consultation that I offer. This is a phone call or a Skype call, whatever works best for you, and we focus on nothing but what you need to do to get yourself better. At the very least, get you pointed in the right direction. I'm recording this video in October of 2020. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do these free consultations for, so I highly encourage you to take me up on this opportunity while you still can. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. I will see you in the next one. Take care.